Howdy, who all my stock market gamblers? Welcome today, I'm Tall Mike. So glad you're here. What's going on in the markets? Well, we had an 8% correction on the NASDAQ, a 6% correction on the S&P. Is that over? My take is probably not. Now we are at the 50 day. We've come down, we bounced up and we're at the 50 day. We have to get through that if we're gonna to try to make a new high. I don't think the correction's over. I think we're gonna come back down down lower. We'll see how that plays out. A lot of you moon boys out there think we're going to hit new record highs and keep heading higher and that's a possibility. I'm not ruling it out. As we print money we could hyperinflate and could make the stock market go up but I do not think the correction is over. I think we will come back down and retest the recent lows and probably surpass them to the downside. Now your take can be completely different. That's okay. I have no problem with that. Look at right now as we don't get above the 50 day, I'm betting it to the downside. We get above the 50 day, then I'll start looking again to the upside. But right now we haven't proven that we can get back above the 50 day yet. This is just my take. Your take is different. You got to do you. I got to do me. All right, let's move over to what I want to talk about today. Now, I was listening to this economist, right? Now, you cannot get two economists to agree on anything, right? I mean, I'm an economist. I was my degree in college. That's what I studied to become. That's what I have an expertise in, if you will. But yet, I totally disagree with the economist that I was listening to over the weekend. Now, what he says is that the debt does not matter. Does not matter that we're $35 trillion in debt. Now, I'm going to explain his point of view. His point of view is that even though they're $35 trillion in debt, that's $35 trillion in assets to someone else. And when the government pays the interest on that debt, it brings more money out into the economy, good for the economy, so more debt is a good thing. The debt doesn't matter. He thinks we can go to $50 trillion, $100 trillion, $200 trillion. He thinks it's no problem. Now, that would be more in the school of modern monetary theory. I would completely disagree with him. But if he is correct, let's raise the Fed funds rate from 5% to 10%. And let's see if the debt matters at that point. And if it doesn't, let's take it up to 15 to 20%. Now, in his theory, bringing this extra money into the economy that the government's going to be paying is a good thing because the GDP will continue to go up higher if we can just get more money, more debt into the economy, right? And uh, look at the largest bailout in the world is going to be the government, right? Who's going to bail them out? Who's going to bail them out? Well, me and you, a taxpayer, right? I mean, that's who's going to be on the line for this. But you know what? Not so much the baby boomers. We're going to be long gone. Millennials, we're going to hand it off to you. You guys figure out how to pay it off because this uh, economist, he thinks that's fine. Does not see a problem with running up bigger deficits, right? Running up bigger debt, running up, I mean, Social Security, Medicare, unfunded liabilities, $120 trillion. 35 trillion in debt on top of that, 150 trillion. He sees no problem with that. Now we just disagree, right? Now I would agree with them that there's absolutely nothing we can do. Nothing we can do. I get that. There's nothing we can do. I mean, I come on here, I scream, I yell about it, and but there's no real solution. But you know, I was listening to another economist, E.B. Tucker. I like E.B. Tucker. He came out with the book. Uh, why now? Why gold? Right? Why gold? Why now? Something like that. Good book. I'd re recommend it. You can get it for about five bucks on eBay. E.B. Tucker put that book out. But even he has kind of changed his viewpoint, right? He kind of changed his viewpoint that there's no way out of the situation we're in. Basically, we have two choices. Okay. One choice is having a greater depression, a bigger depression than we had back in the 1930s. Now, in the 1930s, for the housing market, it wasn't all that bad. They came down about only about 25% drop. You know why? Well, because people did not have loans on houses at that point. They would not, if you had a loan, the most you would have is a 50% loan to value. Now we have 90%, 95%, 100% loan to value. So I think when the houses get hit in this greater depression, they will come down much more than the 25%, probably closer to 50%, right?
right? Okay, now that's if we go the Greater Depression route. Now, here's the other alternative. You remember, the government has two choices. One is a Greater Depression than we had in 1930s. The other is to just print money into oblivion, and we get the hyperinflation. Now, in nominal terms, your house may stay up here. It may stay up here. I don't really know. It depends how many trillions of dollars they print. You know, I mean, they may buy every house that comes onto the marketplace and will go with the you loan nothing and be happy and then the government will just rent them back to you. The government will buy each house. There won't be private ownership. They'll print that many trillions of dollars to be able to do that. And that's a possibility, I suppose. But at that point, you want to hold on to gold and silver. And I keep saying 500 ounces of silver will get you the average price home at some point when this all plays out, when it all settles out. They go the hyperinflation route. That's exactly what's going to happen. Silver will be a number like you won't even believe. Gold will be a number like you won't even believe. Nothing bad's happened yet, right? We're already $2,400 gold, but nothing bad's happened. That's a low number. You're going to see it keep going up and up and up because that's probably the route the government's going to take. They'll probably go the hyperinflation way because having a greater depression, well, that's not that's political suicide, right? To say to stop printing money, political suicide. Nobody can stop printing money because it's the house of cards, and the house of cards would come crashing down. So we're probably not going to go with the greater depression. We'll probably go straight into hyperinflation. Now, believe me, think about this. In 2008, we had the great financial crisis, and Janet Yellen she came out and said we'll never have another financial crisis ever again. She's more of the modern monetary theory, where every recession we have, we're just going to print trillions of dollars more, and we're going to paper over the recession, if you will. And that's a possibility, I suppose. But what it's going to do is hyperinflate. Now, hyperinflate is the worst thing that a country can have. Why? Well, it destroys the poor people, right? They can't afford to eat. They can't afford food. They can't afford to put gas in the car, but it destroys the middle class also. They can't afford their, see their income, even though they have jobs. It doesn't go up enough to keep up with the cost of hyperinflation. So hyperinflation, no country survives that, right? The country, it resets itself at some point. And I think we're going to reset within the next three years. Some people say as far out as five years. We went over that before. You just do the math. I could teach a fifth grader this. $35 trillion in debt, 5%. What is that? I don't know. A couple trillion dollars right? At least. Okay. So anyways, half the money that's going to pay off just the interest that we take in in taxes. It's not sustainable. Something's got to give and the reset will come and it will be a great reset. We don't know exactly how that's going to play out. I say it goes with CBDC route where maybe you trade in a $10 bill and get one CBDC, maybe as much as $100 to get one CBDC, but it's going to be reset. We cannot continue at the pace we're going, but we're going to hide and play. But E.B. Tucker, now he came out with a new a, a new game plan, right? And he's got kind of the solution. His solution is more of the YOLO fans, right? You only live once. Okay, so what he's saying is, look, this is going to end terribly. Everything's going to crash at the end. It's all going to blow up. You're not going to have freedom to move around the country, let alone to leave the country or come back into the country. Your freedom's going to go away when they start the CBDC. And I tend to agree with them on that. We've already lost a lot of our freedom them in the United States, and we're going to lose a lot more when they control the currency that way. So what he's saying is to go out and have fun now, right? Go on vacation. Go take your family on vacation. Don't go coach. Go first class, right? Spend all your money because this is going to end really poor. Now, I completely disagree with his take on this. Not that it's going to end poor. I don't think you should be YOLOing right now. I don't think you should be doing the you only live once thing. Look, I I think you should be preparing. That's just my take. I say prepare. How do you prepare? You prepare with stacking a little bit of silver, stacking a little bit of gold, stacking some food because food's going to become very short at supply, right? There's going to be a food shortage coming. There's going to stack water for sure. Water's very important. Ammunition's probably going to be a good thing. If we go the Mad Max route, and I do see it, I mean, it's not going to be pretty when it happens. I mean, you, countries that hyperinflated, I mean, 
You can read the books. I've never lived in one. I know Argentina has done it. I know Zimbabwe. I know, you know, Weimar, Germany. They were bringing wheelbarrows of cash just to the grocery store, just to get the groceries. I mean, that's crazy stuff, right? And in Weimar, Germany, during that time, if you had 25 ounces of gold, 25 ounces of gold, you could buy a whole a whole city block for just 25 ounces of gold. Now, a lot of you, 25 ounces of gold is a lot of money, right? And I get that, I get that, but what about 500 ounces of silver? Still a lot of money, you know, maybe it's twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 now. But I think that 500 ounces of silver is doable for just about everybody. Stack away, and maybe one a week, one ounce of silver a week. Put away 30 bucks a week. Don't go to Starbucks as much. Start something, right? Start preparing. That's my take. I know a lot of people, a lot of the millennials, a lot of the younger people. YOLO, baby, this thing's all going to crash on us. And they would be correct. It's all going to crash. But how about preparing for it? If you're a little bit more prepared, I think you will weather the storm better. Winter time's coming. We've had summertime, right? We've had summer for the last 14, 15 years. However long they've kept printing the money, right? 2008 till now, they printed an extra 30 trillion dollars so we don't feel any pain so we don't feel a recession so we don't feel the depression and I guarantee you they're going to try they're going to try this they're going to try to double the debt right the debt's 35 trillion now they're going to try to double it to 70 trillion now can they do that before this house of cards comes crashing down I think we're going to crash down before we get to 70 trillion in debt but I don't think that's that far off I think that's four or five years away is all we go from one crisis to the the next crisis to the next crisis. My take is to do a little bit of preparation. My take is to not go the YOLO route. My take is that the debt does actually matter and the interest rate on the debt actually matters. Now, if they lower the interest rate, we're going to hyperinflate. That's probably what's going to happen because they cannot raise the interest rate to fight inflation. So they're going to probably lower it and we will probably hyperinflate. They raise it, all the banks go tumbling down. Even even the government, the government becomes insolvent. The government will be the biggest bailout, of course, next to the banking system, next to the financial system. We will bail out the financial system, and we will see if the government can even stay in power at that point. You just don't know how this is going to play out, but it will not end well. This is just my take. That's all I got for you guys today. It's a short one. Give me the thumbs up if you like this stuff. Punch the subscribe button. Get out there, everybody. Enjoy your day, and we'll We'll talk again later in the week. Bye-bye now.